Shalom, Zagago. Shalom, Ariel. Sounds wonderful in there. Thank you. It is just electric tonight. But I had to come and stand out and hear the latest. Well, the journey itself is going about as well as can be expected. But there is a problem. What sort of problem? Gabriel is such a fan of this Mary. No, it's not Mary. It's not, it's not Joseph. They're great. It's where they plan to stay. Let me guess. It's not a palace. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's not the kind of place I'd choose for his birthplace either, but... Abba's ways are not our ways, nor the ways of mortals. Though they're closer to our ways than they are to mortals. <laughs> no, it's not the palace that I'm concerned about. It's the inn. There's no room. It's full. But tonight's the night. These things are delicate. They go wrong all the time. Uh, do they have a plan B? They don't even know plan A is a no-go. They're still a couple miles outside of uh, Bethlehem. Okay. Then there's still time to do something to fix this. Actually, we're already on it. Gabriel called an emergency meeting of the executive team. Our first proposal, however, was rejected. Which was? Tell the Christ child to stay put in the womb for a day or two. Oh, just till we get this sorted out. But, uh, let's see, if Abba said something about this being the fullness of time. So, I thought maybe the fullness of time could be Tuesday, or maybe Wednesday. But, he said no. So now what? Well, Gabe, Gabriel, sent one of the seraphim down to do some reconnaissance. Uh, she returned with this report briefed us about each of the guests, the innkeeper, uh, the innkeeper's family, etc. We determined that one guest has some real potential. The one named Tarek. Tarek, a merchant who runs his mouth non-stop, whether in the company of humans or animals or just by himself. He talks and talks. What potential do you see in that? Well, I, I didn't see it either. But Azrael... Azrael? The angel of death? I told you. It's the executive team, Ariel. That includes the angel of death. Well, it's about dinner time. So Azrael's gone down there. And while they're eating, he's going to trigger a memory in this Turk's mind that Turk is just going to feel compelled to start telling people, even though he won't have fully chewed his food. So he'll swallow... And instead of telling his story, <coughs> he'll die. Humans need to breathe. So he'll check into a room about six feet under, and suddenly there's a vacancy for you know who. So that's the best plan you could come up with? It's not a plan, Ariel, it's a proposal. We're still waiting on divine approval from Abba. Speaking of which, uh, I'm aware that there's no room in the inn. He will be born in a stable. A stable? That's what it says. So, not a palace, not an inn, not even quarters for a human being. The Son of God is to be born like Livestock. Suddenly our proposal doesn't look so bad, does it? You're missing the point. You don't think I'm fully aware of the situation down there? I'm a watcher. No, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just, look. I know that as a watcher, you spend most of your time out here surveying or, or whatever you call it. Watching. That's the term watchers use. We watch. Okay. You've been to the throne room, correct? Of course. There's no place like it in the universe. No, there isn't. I've often wondered what I would do if I weren't able to sing. If I went in there, 
the glory of Abba's presence washing over me full force. And I opened my mouth to respond and nothing came out. Well, it would be, it'd be like a human being with a clogged windpipe. Like I might die. We all have our assigned duties, but singing in praise of Abba is no duty. It's a gift. It is, it is air. And of course, this applies no less to the sun than it does to Abba. But he has no throne room. He will be born in a barn. Am I to hope that cows and donkeys will praise him with their song? What do you want me to do? Uh, I'm sorry, there's nothing you can do. Not true, not true. There's something you can do. You can do what you're called to do. You can watch. Yes, and maybe survey too. And you, you should go sing. Shalom, my friend. Shalom. back. Indeed. I could not stay away. How are things? Not bad. Actually, I already know. I didn't see it, but I felt it. I felt it. We all did. The moment the child took its first breath, our song changed. Notes we'd never heard before, melodies we'd never sung before, harmonies upon harmonies. We just knew. I did some singing out here myself. The other, the other watchers, they, they joined me. We all sang. Ah, hey, look up here. Wow, that's quite the star. Is it new? Yeah. Hamishel's been preparing to detonate it for weeks. That angel is nuts. I thank God we're immortal. <laughs> oh, he'd be dead a million times over. Did anyone down there happen to take notice of the star? Someone, in fact, did. What'd they make of it? After some vigorous discussion, get this, they determined that it announced the birth of a king. <laughs> no kidding, no kidding. <laughs> and they're coming to pay him homage. Thank goodness. I imagine the lack of any earthly response would be disconcerting for the mother and father. Will they uh, be there soon? Oh, about a year and a half from now. So that's it. The world has changed tonight and no one noticed. Everybody else assumed it's just another day. Uh, why must it be so secret? It's not gonna be so secret. Right, right. This, it's a secret kept from everyone except some stargazing goofballs from God only knows where. Oh, they're from Persia. Sorry, from the goggle only knows where. The executive team met to discuss this very concern, and... Uh, let me guess, you put together a proposal? We did. We proposed that we make a more direct announcement. More direct than the addition of a star to the sky filled with billions of others? Yes. An announcement made by us. Angels. Ah, if only Abba ever approved your proposals. <laughs> Abba approved. What? Are you serious? You underestimate the executive team's influence. Ah! <laughs> Who's to make the announcement? Ah, uh, that's TBD. But other angels are welcome to come along. Oh, you can be sure the whole stinking heavenly host is going to be out there for that sing-along. They're all welcome to. We shall cover the face of the earth. It'll be spectacular. What better way to communicate that he has come to bring the kingdom of God than by singing our song on earth as it is in heaven? Uh, actually, the announcement will not be made to the entire earth. It's joy to the whole world. Why not? Oh, of course. 
the the sun, the sun. Yes, uh, we definitely want to do it when there's a night sky. Maximize our impact. I got it. I got it. We do it once. Wait 12 hours. Do it again. No one gets shortchanged. Uh, actually, actually, ABBA is limiting our exposure a bit uh, more than that. So just, just this side of the planet. Oh, okay. No. The other side of the planet? No, it, it, it's this side of the planet, just not the whole of it. How much of this side of the planet? The Roman Empire? All of Israel? Jerusalem? No. Where? Just outside of Bethlehem. Actually, maybe it technically is still Bethlehem. Uh, not Bethlehem proper, uh, but definitely in the vicinity. Uh, like, on a clear day, you can see Bethlehem from there. Will, will Bethlehem be able to see us? Uh, you mean people in Bethlehem proper? Because... Israel, I need your help, please! No, no, they won't. Can you just tell me the location? Uh... 31.739 degrees north by 35.122 degrees east. What's that? Those are the coordinates ABBA specified. Here, take a look. Okay. So there's Jerusalem. Okay, go south. What's that fortress? Fortress? Uh, no, uh, you've gone too far south. That's Masada. So a little, little north and west. Oh, that little town? That's Bethlehem? Okay, focus in. Do you see the city proper? I don't know what that even means. The part where people live. Yes. Go west of that. There's nothing west of that! Right, you're getting close. Okay, there's... should see a big hill. Yes! Just over the side of that hill. Okay. That's it. That's what? That's 31.79 degrees north, 35.122 degrees east. Don't you see anyone? No. No what? Well, wait. I see sheep. The announcements can be made to sheep. I mean, did I miss a memo? Because it sure seems to me the animals are playing a much bigger role in this than I had anticipated. Keep looking. What else do you see? A small fire. Correct. And? Uh, one, two, three, four, five lumpy sacks of, I'm guessing here, potatoes? Those aren't lumpy sacks of potatoes. I said it was a guess. So what is it? Rutabagas? Tell me. I'm tired of guessing. People. Interesting. I suppose it goes without saying, I'm not impressed. No, I wasn't either. Oh, but now you are? Well, not by them. By what then? The sheep? No, oh, by Abba. Maybe you spend too much time in the throne room, Ariel. You forget where Abba's glory truly lies. All the source of all that radiance and grandeur. The real reason we sing. It's love. A love that not only receives glory, but uncovers it. Abba sees the glory hidden in lumpy sacks of potatoes. But let's face it. It's not just those shepherds. It's all of them. humans and their lumpy attempts at glory. Compared to what you've seen, there's hardly a difference between their stables and their palaces. They have, they have no idea. But tonight, tonight, the Son of God was born among them. God is a spud, wrapped in a blanket, sleeping where their animals feed. Because of love, Ariel. Love for those lumpy sacks of potatoes. A stable is no throne room. Shepherds are no royal court. 
but I've never seen something so glorious. Let me guess, it's Abba. You, you've been asked to deliver the announcement to the shepherds. I'll go tell the choir to get ready. 